There are strong connections between probabilistic programming and causality. Standard operating procedure in probabilistic programming is to model abstractions in the data generating process and the relationships between them, causal relationships. Probabilistic programming is descended from directed graphical models, also known as Bayes nets, where causal inference is a common use case. Cognitive scientists use probabilistic programming to model how humans generate explanations. The vision as inverse graphics model of computer vision is a causal model. There are connections to computer simulation where we directly model mechanism. So can we use our probabilistic programming models to make causal inferences? How can we construct our models so that we can apply formal methods from causal inference? Can we use the native abstractions of our models in causal reasoning? Or do we have to explicitly model something called a potential outcome? Can we use the generative explanatory nature of our models, or are we limited to doing Bayesian inference on potential outcomes as if it were a missing data problem? Finally, how can we do causal inference from data when many of the variables in our model are not observed in the data? Here, I illustrate how we can do some of these things using a simple example of a causal directed latent variable model. Suppose we have the following plate model representation of a data generating process. We generate n iid points of the variables u, x, and y. We describe generation of n points of data using the following plate model representation. Further, we assume the directed structure of the graph reflects actual causal relationships between u, x, and y in the true data generating process. We further assume the causal Markov condition, meaning that the joint probability distribution between u, x, and y will factorize along the causal graph into the product of conditional distributions on each node. So we get a generative model that samples each of these items in sequence. Let's further assume that the parameters of these conditional distributions are known a priori. Given this model, I want to simulate from the intervention distribution on y. This is the distribution of y given do x equals small x prime, or using the more simplified shorthand, y sub small x prime. Causal directed graphical models give us a tool for simulating intervention called graph mutilation. In graph mutilation, we remove the incoming edge to x, set its value to the intervention value small x prime, and then we can forward simulate from this transformed model. In the general case of probabilistic programming, we can view this as a kind of program transformation, one that replaces the expression that samples the variable x with one that assigns it a constant value, breaking its dependence on any expression that came before it in the program. We then sample from this transformed model. The pseudocode here shows how we can implement something like this in a probabilistic programming language like Pyro, using something like Pyro's do operator, which will transform the program. Now, suppose we did not know the parameters of the conditional distributions. We can model them as random variables and make them explicit in the DAG, like in a Bayesian hierarchical model. To be clear, these thetas are not causes. They just parameterize the conditional distributions of our original set of variables. We call these parameters Greeks, written in Greek letters, and distinguish them from the Romans, written in the Roman alphabet. Romans are components of the data generating process that have causal relationships, u, x, and y in our example. Greeks parameterize the Roman distributions. From the perspective of an inference algorithm, they're all random variables. But when it comes to how we use this model to reason causally, this distinction is important. So given unknown theta and data containing observations on u, x, and y, we'll do proper Bayesian inference of y sub x prime. We'll first get the posterior distribution on theta, then we'll sample from the predictive distribution of y sub x prime. We first learn the posterior distribution of theta given x, y, z on the full graph, then generate y from the transformed model as we did before. Again, this is how this algorithm might look in Pyro-like pseudocode. The intuition is that with exact inference, if the data is large enough, we just converge to the original case where thetas were known. Now what happens if u is latent? Assuming we can train a latent variable model to convergence, will our model transformation with the do operation combined with forward simulation still work? Assuming our training of theta converges, the do operation transformation simulation procedure will still generate samples. But samples of what? If this worked, it would be equivalent to getting the predicted intervention outcome from just the predicted outcome, without adjusting for any confounding by the latent u. That feels like a free lunch. 
In other words, is y sub x prime still identifiable given just x and y? Non-identification here means that the inference algorithm converges to multiple values of the vector theta, and these values would each yield the same joint distribution on x and y, but different intervention distributions on y sub x prime. In the literature, there are several techniques for achieving causal identification in cases like this. We bend these techniques into two buckets, parametric identification and identification through loss function constraints. Parametric identification relies on how the conditional distributions between the Romans are modeled. For example, we might assume a linear model or that U is a lower dimensional continuous latent representation of a higher dimensional binary X as one might see in unsupervised learning. Parametric identifiability requires the parametric assumptions to carry a lot of weight. We might do a posterior predictive check to see if the parametric model is a good fit, but we can't falsify a posterior predictive check. We really just have to assume it's the right parametric model. Further, it's challenging to find parametric constraints that provide identifiability while still working on practical problems. Loss function constraints try to address the non-uniqueness of the thetas during training by, for example, using priors or enforcing independence between the parameters. Here, we have a semantic gap. We're trying to use a statistical solution to solve a causal problem. We propose using the do calculus to guarantee identifiability of a causal query in a latent variable model. The do calculus is three rules defined in terms of deseparation and transformations on the model structure, specifically removal of causal relationships. We can use the do calculus to determine if a causal query is non-parametrically identifiable given what's observed and what's latent in the data and the structure of a model. The typical use case is as follows. If a causal query is identifiable, construct an S demand from the observed variables, then construct a statistical estimator that targets that S demand. Going back to our latent U model, if we add an intermediate variable between X and Y, the model becomes identifiable according to the do calculus. It becomes identifiable through a do calculus derived condition called the front door criterion. The new M variable is called a mediator in the parlance of causal inference. So again, the typical use case for do calculus is to derive a statistical estimator for the S demand. In our example, the front door S demand is this double integral. In constructing an estimator for this S demand, we might observe that we're using these three distributions, the probability distribution of M given X, and the probability distribution of Y given M and X, and the probability distribution of X. So we can model these three distributions directly and separately on X, M, and Y. Finally, we could apply Monte Carlo integration. Alternatively, we could apply other approaches for doing direct estimation of the S demand. This gives us the answer to the causal query. But as probabilistic programmers, we don't want direct estimation. We want to train our latent variable model. I say this is indirect because we are training a fully generative model that can handle arbitrary probabilistic queries including this particular causal query, y sub x prime, as well as other causal queries that are identifiable by the do calculus, for example, m sub x prime. Our key insight is this, so long as our model correctly represents the joint probability of the observed variables, then if we have do calculus identifiability for a given causal query, our trained theta do operation transformation simulation procedure is just another estimator for that causal query. So how can the causal query be identified when the latents are not? We've only added M to this model, but M's addition doesn't impact our uncertainty about theta or U and its relationship with X and Y. The intuition is that this uncertainty is orthogonal to Y sub X prime, meaning no matter what answer about U the algorithm converges on, those answers will all say the same thing about Y sub X prime. So our takeaway is that we can let the do calculus handle causal identifiability. Discussions about priors, hyper priors, constrained loss, dimensionality, approximate versus exact inference. We can have these discussions in the context of understanding the properties of our estimator. For example, understanding its variance, its bias, computational complexity, scalability, efficiency, etc. We drive this intuition home with this front door example by showing that simulating from the transform graph is indeed an estimator for the front door estimand.
We show this by taking the probability distribution of y given x prime on the transform graph and expanding it out until we see that it's equivalent to the front door s demand. Therefore, the procedure of training theta, transforming the model, and simulating y is just an estimator for this s demand.